You know, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that we love very rich, very deep sounding music that comes from a relatively simple place. And I was just watching one of these old jazz casual episodes, this old black and white footage of the John Coltrane Quartet with McCoy Tyner playing piano. And I spotted something that was so beautiful and and rich sounding, but such a simple idea that I wanted to share it with you today. And that's why we're going to be practicing a little bit of McCoy Tyner's vocabulary. And we're going to learn it in a very short amount of time. Let's practice. Welcome, welcome, everybody. My name is Adam Manis. Thank you so much for joining us today. As always, everything we're doing over here on this YouTube channel is sponsored by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com for a deeper dive on all of this stuff, including today. We actually, everything we're doing today is is uh, worked on quite a bit in my course, Pentatonics and Playing Out. And we have an offer for everybody here on YouTube today, $40 off that course. You can follow the link here in uh, the chat or the description Ian's gonna put in there for you. So that's that, but let's talk about what we're gonna work on today. So I've got this, it's a really just a short bit of vocabulary from the great McCoy Tyner, and it's so simple in its uh, formula, but it sounds so beautiful and rich. There's really so much we can get out of it today. So what are we gonna be doing today? Here's how this is gonna look. If you haven't heard this or seen this video, Go check it out. It's it's amazing. The whole thing is incredible. I used to have these on VHS when I was a kid. They're just so beautiful. All of them. There's tons of different ones that you can you can check out. But uh, what a what a great treasure. So we're gonna listen to that. I'm gonna break down what's going on in this piece of vocabulary from McCoy. Then we're gonna practice it with McCoy, thanks to our friends at Sound Slice. And then we're gonna take it through a few keys. I have a few lined up, but I'm not really sure how many we're gonna get to. Uh, oh yeah, and you can always download the PDF right here in the chat or the description if you want to follow along and see all of the keys that I have written out. I think I have five or six keys written out for you. Take them through yourself though too. Don't be lazy. <laughs> Take them through yourself. I'll give you a little bit, but uh, you should definitely work on your transposition muscle as we do this. So there's that going to learn a bit of McCoy Tyner vocabulary in just a few minutes. Really, really simple. So let's check out what we're going to be practicing today, shall we? So I've got the video queued up here in Sound Slice. And let's take it from the beginning. We'll take it from the very beginning of the video and listen up to the point where we hear the bit of vocabulary that we want to emulate, shall we? Again, let's do that again. Oof. One 
more time, one more time. Let's hear it again. Let's set it up a little bit more. Unbelievable. Check this out. I'm just amazed. I love watching McCoy play. Like I said, he's got such big hands. And as someone with rather large hands myself, I'm always impressed by how much uh, elegance and control he has with his hands. It's just amazing for, for such a, a, a large person to have all that grace with it. It's just astounding. Uh, so, so cool to see and to hear the, the tone he gets from the strike. You know, it's just, it's just so beautiful. So I'm so happy. Uh, to watch this with you all. Let's check it out again. Let's check out. So did you hear what's going on there? Do you hear how he kind of takes it outside a little bit of this F minor vibe for just a second? We're going to back it up a little bit. We're going to slow it down just a hair. Let's see if we can get it down to, let's see, right here. We'll slow it down to 80%. Actually, you can hear a lot at 80%. Don't you wish you could play a line like that? I mean, just like to have that that sound. All right, let's let's break down what's going on. That's what we'll be working on today. Just that little line, right? Just that four bars there that we have. So this is Afro Blue, of course, in F minor, and we just have this four bar phrase. And let's let's check out what's going on here. Of course, again, you can download the PDF if you like, uh, right there in the description. And if this is the kind of jam that you like to jam to, go ahead and click that uh, like button right now and let me know that this is what you want to see more out of this channel. That's how we know what you like. So there's a lot of interesting things happening here, first of all. So I chose this line because of that one simple idea that, that popped out to me. And the way that both McCoy Tyner actually and John Coltrane use this technique quite a bit, uh, you think like, oh, he's taken it way out. Well, not necessarily. Uh, he's really just superimposing the five chord over this one chord. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, really? Just the five chord? Like, why just the five chord? Well, it makes sense, right? That's like the first place you would substitute. If we're thinking like way back to the beginnings of music and, and as we start to like dive into moving from one note to another or one chord from another, that five chord is the one that is the most in line in that overtone series that sounds the best that leads us back home. So it completely makes sense that if you were going to try to take it over, uh, take it out over uh, the one, that the five would be the first obvious choice. Now, it's not just any five that they're using over this minor progression. He kind of hints at this uh, altered dominant sound, right? So look at what happens here. He slept, first of all, he just, in true McCoy style, let's see if I can grab my sustain pedal, moved all the way out of the shot here. In true McCoy style, he just slams down on F and C, right? I mean, you gotta, you gotta plant your flag. We're in F minor, folks. Now the very next chord he hits with his left hand, uh, in, in uh, coordination with his right hand, really now, that now we imply that we're in this C7 altered. Listen to that, going from this. Jimmy Garrison's still walking in F minor, by the way. Right, and look at the line he plays. That's a G flat major triad. So maybe he's thinking this is like a G flat, you know, um, sharp 11 sound. But I really think that both McCoy and John Coltrane, when they were doing this, because they both used this technique a lot, they were probably thinking 5-1 here. It just makes the most sense as opposed to tritone sub or whatever that is. You know, like, I think they're really thinking that altered dominant sound. I could be mistaken about that, but that's just my my gut feeling. So he goes up here, this G flat major triad, right? With this, this C7 sharp nine voicing in his left hand. Look at that. E the third, B flat the seven, and E flat the sharp nine. Now with this G flat major triad, we know that like on a C7 altered, if we're doing like triads over, over the shell that the G flat is like a number one choice, right? Because we've got that flat nine, we've got that sharp 11 or the flat five, we've got the seven. So here in this, if we just take the first three notes of the line and the chord that he plays, E, 
B flat, E flat, D flat, F sharp, or G flat, and B flat. Look at this. We've got the third, the seventh, the sharp nine, the flat nine, the sharp 11, and again, the seventh of a C seven alt. So that to me, really, we're, we're going five one here. So even though we're on an F minor, can superimpose that. And doesn't that sound kind of out? I mean, it sounds out, but it really makes sense. And especially when we bring it back home. So check it out just slowly here. So what he does then in his left hand as he goes up here, right? So he moves this left hand up a half step. And you could think, oh, okay, well, what is that D flat? sharp nine or maybe g13 i think he's just moving this up a half step i'll be honest he did this quite a bit where you know he would kind of plane his fourth voicings he would just kind of move them around right i don't think he was because if you look at what's going on the right hand it's still c7 altered right and then he lands us back home on that f minor going down that F minor triad. And then, you know, a little C triad there at the end. That still, to me, implies that F melodic minor harmony. Maybe that's, although maybe he's thinking that's another C7, you know. And he's breaking it down again. Then he does this super hip thing. Check this out. So me and my friend Max Gamiz, who's our transcribing guru here at Open Studio, we talked about this chord a little bit today. See that C7 chord, that second to last chord in the left hand? I thought it was this, like a G diminished shape. And we'll listen to it again, and you tell me what you think. And if there are any, if there are any sluice out there with their ears, let me know what you think McCoy was playing here, because the audio is not great. So it's kind of hard to hear. It doesn't do you any favors. Max thinks that this, I think Max is a better transcriber than me, so I'm going to go with Max there, that it's A flat, B flat, D flat, and C. But, you know, I don't know. To each his own. I, I would say if, if, if you can hear that G in there, which I thought I heard maybe, I don't know. It's hard to hear. But anyway, but look at what's going on here. So we kind of have in our left hand, this is the second to last bar, the D flat seven chord. You have F, B natural, or C flat really, and E flat, right? Implying D flat seven, but look what happens in the right hand. F, D flat, C. Why is there not a C flat in there? Right, it's D flat seven. Because he's still kind of, he's keeping us in this F minor. Even when his left hand is playing like the D flat seven, his right hand is really keeping us in that home space. Even when he goes to the five and he comes back. I mean, genius. He's just one of the great geniuses of the 20th century, McCoy Tyner, one of the great pianists ever and uh, incredible. And then he lands us back home at F seven. So if we were to just hear that again, right? Try to play the left hand and the right hand. That's why we gotta practice it. Oof. Don't just take my word for it though. Let's hear it again uh, in McCoy's own playing. It's way better than what I could do. Let's check it out. See, I didn't even, I haven't changed it yet in the sound slice. This is what I love about doing things here on YouTube in sound slice. Watch this. Because Ma I think Max might be right. Max changed it. Never mind. Just had to refresh. <laughs> but there you go. You can see right there, A flat, C, and E. Let me know. What do you think? It's hard to hear. I don't know. All you uh, you rabid transcribers out there, let me know what you think. Let's hear it one more time. McCoy playing this beautiful piece of language that we're going to work on today. We're going to practice this with McCoy, actually. Let's hear it one more time. Whew. Yeah, that's definitely a C7 altered over that F7. Just really leaning heavy on that altered dominant over the one card while the one chord is going on. Okay, shall we work on this? I think that would be a good idea. 
Let's get our practice routine together. We're gonna loop this. Should we start very slowly? Because this is rather complicated. I think so. Again, in three, four. Let's see if we got it. I'm gonna go right hand only at first. Let's make sure to get it. Vocalist, just get the, the, the main line. Again. All right, I'm trying to mix in the, the left hand. left hand by itself actually I need to slow this down to 50. Humbling. Trying to hang with McCoy can be humbling, huh? <laughs> it's really great, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful, though? This is one of my faves. All right, here we go. Actually, I think I just need to work on, let's just work on just the first two bars. That's where I'm really getting thrown here. Let's see if we can do this. Just this much. It's tough. That's what it is. I see what's happening here. I had a different chord there on the second, the fourth chord in on that second bar. I had a different chord and Max has changed it, but I think he, I think Max is right. Let's try it again. Max is usually right. But that's, that's what was screwing me up. I was seeing that F sharp when I was, had been playing F sharp. One more time, let's try it. Ah, okay, I got it, I got it. We got the whole thing. 50%, this is just half speed. Ugh, hanging with McCoy is sad. Let's try it again. too long. Let's try this. of chords on it. Stop being so accurate, Max. You're messing me up in my inaccuracies. No, that's good. Though. I 
get what's going on now. Yeah, when I refreshed, this is what happened. When you have a friend who's more accurate than you are, you're gonna get you're gonna get hung out to dry. This is inevitable. Let's try it again. Sixty percent. I think. I got it. <laughs> Let's try it again. Ooh, I got it. I think I understand. Beautiful. Let's try it again. Seventy percent, y'all. We're getting there. I told you, just fifteen minutes. We get a little bit of a uh, McCoy Tyner vocabulary. It's amazing. Let's try it again. up let's hear it again in context now that we've played it a few times isn't that beautiful how great is that isn't it handy to know too hold on i got i'm covering up everything here Jeez, uh so handy let's try it again let's listen to it though in context we'll back it up just a smidge shall we let's back it up and hear what happens kind of before and after <laughs> One thing to note about that, that's sort of it, where it happens is important too. It's in context, right? It's kind of, it's like after the, like the end of a phrase, it's, it's kind of leading us into a new phrase. So yeah, just incredible, just incredible. Uh, so we can kind of like note that that's sort of towards the end of an eight bar phrase. He's kind of setting that up and then he ends with this by taking it way up. Okay. Let's hear McCoy do it one more time before we, I, I'm just taking a break too. <laughs> just kind of resting my brains. best is the best all right back to our work well let's take it up to 80 percent. see what we can do let's try it here let's get it running see if we can hear it with the left hand. Ah. 
ninety percent. Can we hit ninety? Let's try it. I don't know. Got it. gonna go for it we're gonna go for a hundred here just to see if we can do it you know let's see if we got it ready the sound when it comes in at real speed the sound is apparent. Tumbling. <laughs> it's humbling. It's humbling. It's great. Wow. Amazing. Let's check it out again. Let's check out the. Let's see here. Let's check out the breakdown of it real quick. So, yeah, Max and I have a couple of Max updated that sound slice. Um, but I did not update the the chart. So we have a couple of discrepancies. I thought it was C7 from the get-go. Max had an F there on the bottom of that first chord. I wasn't hearing that, but again, I respect Max's ear, so it might be that. We'll, we'll deliberate after this live and let you know. But let me know what you hear too, because it is not the most easy thing to hear, you know? It is not, that recording is not the most easy. So again, check it out. Either way, what's going on in the... going on in the right hand clearly applies the C7 altered over that F. I can't do it without it now. That chord just feels so unnatural too. That A flat, B flat, D flat, E. Again, I think maybe you had the G in there. I don't know. Maybe not. It's hard. so hard to hear. Uh, so there it is in F. We just worked on it with McCoy. Let's take it through. We have a little time here. Let's take it through a couple of different keys. So that's it in F. Let's do, let's go down. Let's go down to D minor. Get in the mud a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So if we were doing in this D minor... this out what do we have here so we're going to go to this a7 alt right so we've got an e flat major triad again we're leaning on that five altered so check it out we go up this e flat major triad right i'm just gonna do the right hand for now and then land on that d minor that a major triad again kind of hinting that we're back at a and then And I love that there's this A natural here over the B flat seven, even though there's clearly an A flat in his chord in his left hand. Check that out. Let's try it. We can try this pretty slowly, actually. 
Got my click happening. Let's go this slow. One, two, three, and. Let's try it. Two, three. Just do the, the right hand. We might have to split up these hands. That left hand is so difficult. Two, three, and. Uh, sorry, I'm doing it in four. One, two, three. Two. Try it again. Two, three. Let's try the left hand by itself. Two, three. That's hip. Try it again. One, two, three. Try to combine them, see what we got. One, two, three. Almost got it, almost got it. Try it. One, two, three. Just a little bit here. One, two, three. Try it again. One, two, three. key than F minor. One, two, three. And again, the key takeaway of this is this brilliant simplicity here that we're just, you know, this five and the one, they're so related that we can just interlay one over the other. And it sounds awesome. I mean, it really does. It's just such a beautiful way to kind of take it quote unquote out. I mean, we're not really going out. We're going to the five chord, but it sounds out. Like when you heard McCoy play that bit of vocabulary, you were like, oh, that's, he's going out. Like he's, but it's not, it's not really, it's not really going out. Let's do one more key, shall we? So that's D minor. Let's try G minor. This is a, a whole step above where we were. So let's just take a look. We'll go down. Let's just do the right hand only. So again, you can see here uh, G minor. So we, we're going to imply D7 altered. We have that A flat major triad over the G minor. Just beautiful. One, two, three. It's pretty high. One, two, three. Beautiful though. Try it again. One, two, three. Let's try the left hand just by itself. Left hand just by itself. One, two, three. 
I don't know, man. I don't know if that's the chord. That's just so, it's so, it's a weird, weird feeling for McCoy to play. Try it again. Two, three. Again, one, two, three. Left hand only. How great is that? All right, let's try combining them. One, two, three. why we practice. It's just so beautiful. Let's go up with the metronome. One, two, three. One more tempo and we'll call it 120. This is pretty fast for our first time through this key. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three. so many pianists favorite that right there it's just so cool let's hear the original one more time it's like way way better than anything i'm doing with it uh let's do it in context again we'll back it up quite a bit and just check it out here 100 percent. listen to mccoy just just float check it out mm -hmm. 
Just so much respect. Shout out to oh, those Ralph Gleason jazz casuals to such great documentation of this. So that's a bit of a McCoy Tyner vocabulary. Again, if this is the kind of stuff you like, hit the like button, get that PDF there in the link or description. And for our YouTube folks uh, only on this, because this is so close to what we teach. I mean, this is what we're teaching over at Pentatonics and playing out $40 off uh, when you click on the link from this video. Thank you, everybody. Super fun. What a blast. The great McCoy Tyner. Great to practice with you today. Uh, see you soon. Happy practicing.